the list. Here in the Northwest, for the Conservative Party, Sajid Kareem has come out in the last couple of weeks. He now supports a second referendum and Britain remaining in the European Union. So if you are a Brexiteer and you live in the Northwest of England, you simply cannot vote Conservative. And what you may ask of the Labour Party. Now, Corbyn's been playing this game of ambiguity, trying to appeal to Remainers in Islington and Leavers up here in Blackpool and elsewhere. Neither being one thing nor the other. But here is the truth of it. Slowly but surely, piece by piece, the Labour Party's betrayal of much of its own electorate and its own manifesto promise has been just as bad, if not perhaps even worse, than that which has been done by the Conservative Party. And here, and here, in the North West, there are three sitting Labour MEPs. They're on top of your list here in the North West, and if you vote Labour, all three of those Labour MEPs who are up for re-election, all three of them support a second referendum and Britain remaining in the European Union. So let me ask you here in the North West, are you going to vote for those Labour candidates? No! Thank you. And when you really think about it, you could, I suppose, vote for Chuck and Ramuna's party, but I think... <laughs> I don't think they've really got off the ground. And I suppose, whatever we think of the Liberal Democrats, I guess at least they've been consistent that they want to remain. Lord Adonis, who's now standing. Lord Who was what I thought a few months ago, but Lord Adonis said, if you're a Labour voter and you're a Brexiteer, don't vote Labour. So you can't vote Labour, you cannot, as a Brexiteer, vote for any of the other parties, but there is one party here in the North West that you can vote for, and I want to say, I think what you've seen and heard this afternoon is an amazing array of talented and brave people. On the 23rd of June 2016, we were told by everybody that the way we voted would be honoured and implemented. Remember that leaflet that David Cameron put through everyone's door? Spent 10 million quid of our money telling us how terrible it would be if we voted to leave, that jobs would go, investment would go. We even had George Osborne. <laughs> telling us there'd be an emergency budget, interest rates would go up, taxes would go up, half a million jobs would be lost immediately. We had President Obama coming across and telling us that you know, we'd go to the back of the queue and despite everything, despite all the threats, we the British people voted by a big majority of 1.3 million votes we voted leave and we knew what we were If there's one thing, if there's one thing that really drives me mad, it's being told again and again. It's being condescended to, patronised and being told we didn't know what we were voting for. Well, I think we did know what yes, we were yes, yes. And then it happened again, didn't it? The general election, both big parties said, well, at least they're big parties at the moment. <laughs> but we'll come to that perhaps in a second. And both of them, in their manifestos, promised us, vote for us, and we will honour the result of the referendum. And as previous speakers have said, perfectly clear, 
what the referendum was about. Every single leading player on both the Remain and Leave side said the consequence of leaving was that we would leave the EU, the single market and the customs union. So they both promised us they'd honour the result. We then saw 498 MPs voting for Article 50. I have to say to you folks, even I thought at that stage we'd probably won. Because Article 50 said that we were leaving on the 29th of March 2019 with or without a deal. And given, and given that Mrs May's deal is actually a new European treaty that in some ways is worse than the current terms of EU membership, we should have left on the 29th of March with no deal. And yes, yes. We want to be able to make our own laws. We want, as Heinrich rightly said, to take back our territorial waters, to bring back tens of thousands of jobs to our fishing communities. We will not have the European Court of Justice telling us what we can and can't do. And as far as the £39 billion pounds Monsieur Barney's ransom that Mrs May wants to pay what as far as we in the Brexit party are concerned they can whistle Dixie for their vote. Yeah. Yeah. But you know, this is about more than just leaving the European Union. There is something absolutely fundamental at stake here. Can you imagine if in an African country there'd been an election or a referendum that had been overturned? Many of those in the Remain camp would right now be having fits of the vapours, demanding that the United Nations was sent in and that democracy must win through. But here, here in the country that has had a continuous parliament since the 13th century, here in the country that did more than anybody in the world to develop the concept of parliamentary democracy and then to sell that concept to the post-1945 world with decolonization, here in the country that has the mother of parliaments. It is in our very country where the very democratic process has been willfully betrayed by a political class who have acted, in my view, in the most disgraceful, almost treacherous manner. for the very principle of self-determination and for the very thing that those generations that went before us made massive sacrifices for the best. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. It is about democracy. It is about that bond of trust that needs to exist between government and people for a country to operate successfully. It's about how the rest of the world views us. You know, like many friends I have in Australia, India, around the world, they simply can't believe what's going on in this country. I've, I've got some American friends. I won't name them, obviously. <laughs> I've got some American friends who simply cannot believe what is going on. So, ladies and gentlemen, when you leave here today, I want this to be in your minds. We are not asking you on the 23rd of May to simply go out and to protest. 
This is about more than just fighting back against the establishment. More than that, yeah. important though that is, our ambitions are much higher than they've ever been before. You know, frankly, even if they did force a second referendum upon us, and we won it by an even bigger margin, I don't believe that this parliament and this government would deliver it. I just don't. We have, we have a two-party system that no longer is fit for purpose. A two-party system that is broken. A two-party system that serves nothing but itself. We have a parliament that is out of touch with the nation. We have a civil service who've given up on any idea of being independent and many of them are now active Remain campaigners. Our system, our system is rotten to the core and what we need to do is to change politics for good. for the next three weeks, but we're, we are going to win back our birthright. We are going to win back the ability of our nation to be democratic. So I have to ask you, are you with us? Yes. I want you to join us as a registered supporter. I want you to talk to your friends and your neighbours. I want you to take that message out where you go and tell people Britain needs the Brexit Party and the Brexit Party needs you. As you can hear, ladies and gentlemen, he hasn't lost his touch, has he? He may have travelled a little bit, pull the chair down for us. But he hasn't lost his touch and his love and his passion for this great country. And we've just got a few questions. Uh, I'm just going to ask before we go. Thought you were. The first one uh, is, of course, Nigel. Yeah, politics is a serious business. But the first one is Nigel. What's your favourite beer? Now, now, it is true that up until a couple of weeks ago, I'd never been photographed in public without a pint in my hand. <laughs> this is true. However, much as I think we need to enjoy life and have lots of fun, and goodness me, there's quite a lot to laugh at, isn't there? Yes. <laughs> but actually, I'm taking this campaign so seriously. I realise at Christmas, I by no means fought my most serious battle and right at the moment Mr Chairman I'm off the beer getting thick because we've got a political plan to beat all the 23rd of and going ahead. You heard it here, you heard it here first ladies and gentlemen. That must have had an impact on it. Um, the next question is for Anne. Anne, are you worried that there will be a stitch up? by the Tories and the Labour Party on the withdrawal agreement, given the results of the local election? There will undeniably be an attempt to the stitch-up, and we will still...